moment of silence for his small penis. It's a moment of silence for his small penis. That's far too much silence. That was too much silence. Yeah. Let's go home. What's up, Tillies? Welcome back to the pond. What's up, worm? What's up, worm? What's up, worm, worm? <laughs> Happy blanket launch day. I have been waiting for this moment to, it's been, it's like th three, four months that I've been working on this freaking blanket. I genuinely think that you're underselling how long it's been. I it's think been it's been- It's been fucking ever. I think it's been close. No, I genuinely think you were talking about this in January. Oh yeah, maybe, honestly, maybe. I think you, you might've been talking about this last year. It would No, I don't think so. Cause it would have been cold when I wanted to do it. But then we were like, oh, by the time I get it perfect, it'll be hot. And then by the time we did perfect it, it's cold again. So it's <laughs> at least two seasons. One might call us forward thinkers. For forward thinkers. Yeah, this is probably the most important thing thinkers. that Lauren's ever, ever done. So if it's not selling well, that will really hit her self-esteem. So I'm not oh. saying that, you know, for Her, the sake of my ego and my yeah. self-esteem, I need everyone to go buy this. Blanket. Please buy a blanket. <laughs> Please buy a blanket. I genuinely, I'm not. You know, I'm not a blanket guy. That's not true. Okay. You rarely sit on the couch now without a blanket. Right. I think like, I've I, turned you into a blanket guy. Yeah, but I'm not someone who collects blankets. Oh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> are you normal? <laughs> yeah, you're normal. <laughs> Do you collect blankets? I don't collect blankets. I just like to have options. Oh my. I, I like mean, to have options. It, oh, so there's different blankets for different temperatures. You know what I mean? Like you've got the wild till nylon, which is for maximum uh, sorry, I warmth I'm gonna go back to my and story. comfort. Anyway, <laughs> I, as a non blanket connoisseur, but someone who can appreciate when blankets just feel better than other blankets. Yes. I, I appreciate that this blanket fucks. This blanket fucks. This blanket, and I'm not saying that it's a guarantee, but it will make your sex life better. It'll make your cuddle life better. It'll make your study life better. It'll, It'll make, make your animal so much happier. Way happier. Way, way happier. happier. If you don't have an animal, it would have made it happier. Right. And so even just like the thought of that makes you need the blanket. I, I'm I'm worried that we haven't baby approved it for whatever reason, but babies also love it. Babies also love it. Yeah. We don't have a baby in our life to test that with. But in theory, theoretical baby says that theoretical baby loves it. I will say we have now both in the last few months purchased really expensive designer shoes for babies who have come into our friend's life. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. I spent- I bought a pair of shoes yesterday for my manager's baby who just came into the world, Scott Fisher, Shout congratulations. out, Ryan. Ryan. And I spent $200 on baby Nike shoes that Ryan will probably wear for a total of two months. And are you upset if you can just get one picture of this little baby in the little sneakers? Oh my God. ROI, <laughs> done. ROI, that's all I need is just one little picture of Ryan wearing the baby, the baby. Um, I, there are very few babies that I feel like are born into a world where every possibility is, is truly like at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Ryan could be anything she wants. Ryan had a Birkin while she was still in the womb at about four months old. But like she, there's nothing that-, that I need that everyone child. to back up and just take that in. Ryan had a Birkin bag, which is, you know, minimum $10,000. They're like 10 grand. Yeah. Good for Mr. Birkin. People, you can't buy a Birkin without having a Birkin contact. Who, like, who, who you is Birkin? What? Who was Birkin? Who was she? No one knows. It's like Satoshi. Like no one knows. I'm just kidding. Oh, I, know. I, know I know who Satoshi is. What? I know who Satoshi is. Who's Satoshi? I can't tell you. I it's I can't tell you. Okay. I signed a thing. So yeah. like you can't even go and buy a Birkin at a single store. So how does one acquire a Birkin? You have to have a Birkin man, a Birkin woman, a Birkin person. Wow. Yeah. I would never just to do with that job. That that never. It's like it's a it's a whole. It's like an exclusive. Like it's wow. like a yeah. It's and anyways. So Ryan has a Birkin. Spent a lot of money on baby shoes. You need the blanket. And, and do you have any deals for Lauren <laughs> in the next like uh, thirty days? You just add another thirty days to that because. Manager Scott is busy. Yeah, we we got managers on paternity leave out here. On paternity leave. On paternity leave. And we want to keep them there. Um, so blank is officially out. Uh, but, yeah, but the blank is available today. Shop, what's our website again? Shop. Shop. Dot wild nine. Dot com. Shop. Dot wild till nine. Dot com. Or just go to wild till nine. Dot com. And that's the number nine. And if you don't know that by now, what the fuck? I have, to okay. burp. I have to burp. I actually, <laughs> while you're burping, I do find it very funny when you go and you know how you can like look on what up nerds. Hey, I'm about to talk about Google search. Uh oh, here we um, go. You know, you can like look and see like how people got to your website and like, we genuinely, I don't know why. I think people don't know that. You don't know that? 
Well, I, I think that oh, I know that I know that I blah, blah, I know that now because of you. But I don't think that a lot of people know that like if they were on Habbo Hotel beforehand or watching prawns or something like I don't think that a lot of people know that sometimes on websites you can see where they came from. So we're able to see. I mean, just about you know within reason, right? Unless you're like really savvy and have turned off all of those settings or whatever. But like we're able to see what people either type in on Google to get to us or what search they come from. And you um, would not be shocked to know that spelling out Wild Till 9 the correct way is barely number one as far as acquisition is concerned. How, how else would you spell it? A lot, most people spell it wild space T-I-L-L oh, 9. Okay, well that's, yeah. that, that probably just means that they spell until wrong in the real world as well outside right. of the pod name. Yeah, yeah. and then my other favorite is when you the people put a print, or sorry, the apostrophes, on, on the other side, so T-I-L apostrophe. T-I-L, I, I got that confused for a little bit until I realized like how that works. And just, do you wanna enlighten the people? No, that's okay. The apostrophe goes with wherever the letters you're taking off. <laughs> you're, 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 you're cutting it off. You're abbreviating, putting, yep, yeah, yep, uh-huh. So yep, yep. that one's free, everything else, yeah. So yeah, blankets out, $60 plus shipping and the shipping because this blanket is thick with like five C's um, will be different depending on your country and city. I thought we said it on three C's. Is it really five C's? Oh, bitch, no, this blanket is five C's. She oh, thick. got it, got it. Well, I, I'm excited to see the, the cuddle photos. Oh my God, I know. Yeah. Someone sent their cutest bull terrier. It's bull terrier Loki of bull terrier Loki so doing cute. a zoomy, being so like, cute. this is how Loki feels waiting for his new blanket. And it was so, it's just like all my favorite things. I love it. I know, it's great. Hi, Loki, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> um, so we just got back from New York and I'm <sighs> not kidding. We were out in the world in New York for maybe six minutes and we were like, holy shit, we have tea for the podcast. We've got piping hot tea. I just, I didn't realize that we are the best podcasters and storytellers in the world, we just have been confined to a one <laughs> single building and that it's been difficult to come up with things to talk about because we haven't been out in the world just to watch the world be what the world is. Uh-huh. So that we can sit there and just comment on it. Cause it's- We have a puppies incoming. It's so much easier to think about things to discuss that are on the tip of my tongue. And I just, I have to like hold them back in when we've gone out in the world. Also like, we had we had minor drama happen to us. Like we had literal, like we were involved in in minor T moments to share. I was gonna say, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around which one you're even thinking about. Well, I know, that's what I'm saying. So, And so, I mean, also too, like New York had this past weekend, had New York Fashion Week, had the Met Gala, the VMAs and the US Open. So like, Half of LA was also in New York. So we ran into a lot of people that we knew, like a lot of people that we hung out with in New York are people that we just like haven't seen in months in LA. But the very, for, yeah. I mean, we got on the plane. Oh, Bella Porch was on our flight. I wasn't gonna drop her name, but yeah, Bella Porch was on our flight. Oh my God, literally I was so nervous. I wanted to say hi so bad, but I was having like such a fangirl moment just like admiring from afar. I mean, literally while we were out, like when we finally got to New York and we were all like waiting for cars or whatever, I just like stood there, I go, oh, the bitch was a bop. <laughs> She goes, thank you. You said that? Yes. Oh my God, I had no idea. I literally, I, I literally was, st- you were just like trying to find the cars yeah, with the yeah, person yeah. and like her posse and her like walked by and just go. What do you mean posse? She was just there with her. She was with, the, she was with I a few people. Remember, oh, when she got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I literally just go, build a bitch was a bop. And, she was and like, if you haven't seen build a bitch, fantastic bop, music video. Total bop. I think it like broke records for how much. I think much. so too, yeah. yeah. But like as someone who worked in a position where I was actively working with massive influencers who were doing music for the first, second, third time, Mm -hmm. you didn't set your sights at, you know, the next Michael Jackson thriller every time there's a crossover moment. In fact, you're just like hoping they get through it because it usually sells and people are excited about it. But like the quality of music, not always like what you put out. DIY queen. Which is a bop and a banger and will go down as one of the biggest hits ever. Duh. They're not always bangers. This is a banger. Build a Bitch was a banger. Banger. And not to turn this into a, a Bella Porch commercial, but like, I just thought, from the very first moment, I was like, whoa, she's actually like good at this. Oh my God, yeah, she's a star. Yeah. Um. So she was on her flight and just like- Shout out Bella Porch. Looked high fashion. And like she just like looked fucking cool. And we know that Bella Porch is a big listener. So I know she'll Obviously. really she'll really enjoy this right. moment. Me cowering in the corner, being too scared to say hi. <laughs> the theme of this weekend is like Lauren cowering in the corner. I know, being too scared to say hi to someone that I like love and respect. Um. So on our, so this, that, that flight was fine. That flight, the Bella Porch was on uh, seamless, made it to New York, was totally great. Now let's talk about the 24 hours before, cause that was a <gasps> shit show. 
I've never had a flight experience like this before. And I was telling my therapist today about it. Cause he was like, oh, like, how was your week? What did you do? And I was like, oh, well, like I had like some garbage ass travel then had a great travel day the next day. He was pretty anxious, but like made it through. And he was like, the more, the more times I retell our travel day, the more I'm like, that was really fucked up. Yeah. But, yeah. Th- but the problem was there's not one pinpointing error. No. It was like little domino effects right. that just like continually added on BS to a day that was already BS. Right. So our original flight was on Thursday at 7.30 AM. That got canceled the night before, which is fine because you can plan for that. Got rescheduled to, I think around 1.30 PM. So we don't live super close to the airport. So I think we left our house at around 11 just to be safe because yep. LA Two and traffic- and a half hours before. Yeah, tra- traffic to the airport can just really fuck you. And so we left around 11, got there, everything's fine, check in, board the plane, everything's great, get settled. And we are, I think about 20 minutes late to take off and they come onto the intercom and you're like, oh shit, like, like, like who's the criminal? Like what's right. happening? Someone's having like an anti-mask freak out. Turned out they just couldn't get the door shut. They got the door shut, which, which is- Arguably, you do need doors to shut. You do need doors to shut. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just envision whenever I hear that, I just envision like in the movies when the door opens up and people get sucked out. Uh-huh. Terrifying. I, yes. So I was like, okay, great. Let's close the door before we leave. Like I am down with that. I'm I am, I am okay with waiting for the that. The pilot came by and said, Lauren, Jeremy, is it okay if we shut the door first? And we said, it's okay, pilot. Right. Peter the pilot. Peter the pilot. No, oh, you don't even know who Peter the pilot is. I know enough to say that Peter the pilot. Peter the pilot is an ex bachelor and Peter the, Peter the pilot is not my favorite bachelor. Well then he's not my favorite bachelor either. Yeah, so. Sorry, Peter. And this pilot was so fucking nice. So he doesn't get to be Peter. Okay. Well, Peter, you're out. Peter, you're out. Wait, I think, didn't Peter fly, fly for United? I have no idea. Doesn't anymore. Probably, he's probably an instant influencer now. Well, we were flying United and the pilot in United and the crew and the staff. Was so were nice. Quite it was nice. so nice. And so it was hard to be mad at anyone. But at this point, we're not even mad because we're 20 minutes um, past the window. Right. Which if, if you've flown ever 20 minutes, not drop, bad. In the, drop in the bucket. Drop in a bucket. Not even yet. So we taxi out, whatever, fine. We like wait another 20 minutes probably out on the runway and they over the intercom are like, hi. So we are now in a lineup of 37 planes. I don't even think that I knew that 37 planes could fit on like a taxi runway at one time. At LAX they can. At LAX apparently they can. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, well shit. Okay, we'll just wait our turn. And I guess like it ended up being a whole weather thing somewhere to the east of California. So no one could fly east and everyone had to reroute their flights. Here's the only problem with the whole, you know, it was great thing. So, you know, the door that couldn't shut. Yeah. That pushed it back eight minutes. Okay. I was able to confirm later. The problem is, you know, there were 35 planes waiting to take off like uh-huh. on our runway. The problem is we were actually two behind the one that was currently taking off. Oh, see, I don't even want to hear that. I don't want to know that so, because in my head, it just makes it so much worse. And to know that the reason that we actually didn't get off the ground and onto New York the very first time was because of this kind of door eight minute thing. But we want the door closed. We, we don't do. want the sucky, sucky human in the air, totally. like final destination. Totally. And there's nothing worse than the <laughs> dude who's like, why can't all problems be fixed? And you flight attendant who's in front of me, it's your fault. So yeah, no I'm, one likes that guy. Yeah, that guy sucks. No you just gotta like, you gotta like kick it back and just let life hit you. There. Yeah, and also yeah. 20 minutes, like you're like, whatever, it's gonna be totally fine. We're gonna take off. Totally. So we end up sitting on the runway for three and a half hours. Yeah. That's a flight to like uh, more than halfway across the US, well, three fun, and a half hours. Another fun fact, you don't, when when you land, they don't always fill the, the, the gas tank up again, every single time, because oh, they don't yeah. want to fly with extra weight. Right. So the problem was they were like, you know what? No worries. We'll go to New York. We're just going to go over Mexico. Problem is that'll take more fuel. We don't have enough fuel. So we'll head back to get that fuel. To get to the gate. Yeah. So And that was the beginning of the end. That was the beginning of the end. And so we were like, oh, oh. like, so when you get deplaned, like it's serious. And uh, like, I, I don't think I've ever been deplaned and gotten back on a plane. Oh, really? Actually. So we, this whole weather thing, needed more fuel, went back to the gate, they deplaned us. And someone was mentioning that there's actually a law where they can only keep you on a plane that's on the runway for a certain amount of hours. Yeah, I think it's FAA law. Yeah, so I was wondering, I think maybe we were like creeping up on that like legal time. And so we deplane, we head over to like the little lounge or whatever to get a drink, get a snack. Um, And maybe like 20 minutes later over the intercom, 
um, in the lounge are like, uh, your flight 516 whatever is taking off right now. Doors are closing soon. I'm halfway through a strawberry cheesecake that I had just ripped the plastic on top of. So oh I my saw God. that. Oh, me and the girl next to us who were also on a flight, we, it was like chugging an alcoholic beverage like I was in high school glug, glug, again. Glug, let's go. Yeah, so slammed the drink back and everyone from our flight that's also in the lounge, we're all sprinting across the airport. I wanna know, and if you have an example of this, please at me anywhere. I wanna see one person who can make running with luggage <laughs> look, look graceful. Look graceful. It's not with luggage, even with a backpack because it's flopping up against your back, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, but you're, you're, you're just like either power, like you right. don't feel, but also like, at least it's like socially acceptable Nothing to look feels like an idiot. Dumber. Right, but then you get to the gate and you're like, <sighs> I just can't. you just feel stupid because you're like, <laughs> out of breath walking. Right. So, but I mean, at least we were amongst friends. So we were all sprinting to the gate. And friends so like, is a, an overstatement, but sure. You know what though? I feel like there was a bonding experience between all of us and the passengers around us. Yeah, misery loves company. Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, so we get there and the gate attendant's like, oh yeah, no, like your flight's not ready to board. And so all of us are like, uh, what do you mean? Uh, our flight's not uh, ready to board. And they were like, yeah, sorry. Like that must've been an error. And so we all walk our out of breath asses back to the lounge for another 45 minutes. And so then we enjoyed another drink at a regular pace, which was really nice. And eventually get another call to get back on the flight. So we um, casually walked back this time onto the plane, probably about two hours after the original deplaning, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All I know is that it was never enough to, like, the amount of time that I would would sit down on a seat, get my laptop out, finally figure out if it was- the a, Wi-Fi. If it was gonna tether to my phone versus right. the Wi-Fi in the plane versus the-, the, the I'm, I'm not kidding. I think I got about seven minutes of working time. Right. Despite being with my computer in a seat for nine hours that day. Well, I mean, this was like the anthem of the day is that not having enough time to figure out what was going on to actually do anything. Like, right. I think I played candy. I probably logged about five hours of candy crush time because we just were like waiting in limbo the entire time. Mm -hmm. So get back on the plane and then we sit on the runway, on the airplane for another two, two and a half hours until they finally cancel this fucking flight. So at this point it's 8 PM now. I don't know if those numbers add up, but it's- But also the problem, you know, of course is like when they canceled, they're like, there's a light on the dash. We sent it back to Chicago. We're not in Chicago. And you're just like, we'll let you know. And, and then of course, because everyone has like phones now, we're all getting like the updates of like, 15 minutes later, 15 minutes later, right. 15 minutes later. Right. Eventually you're just like, stop telling me, just just lie to me, tell right. me it's okay. And all these devastated passengers who live in New York have nowhere to stay for the rest of the night because they're trying to go home. So they have to wait in this big ass line to get assigned to their airport hotel until the next flight at 9.45 in the morning. And, and so this is like, I mean, how many hours is that? 24 plus another eight. So that's a, that's a 30 hour day to try and get home on top of the travel time of the next flight. Correct. Oh my God. I mean, I I don't, I can't remember a, I a time. I did the math wrong there. That's not right at all. Yeah. I, it's not we're even gonna close. We're going to let that one go. Yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> we were supposed to leave at 7.30 in the morning Pacific time. Yep. We did not get in until the afternoon of the next day. 6 p.m. by Friday. Yeah. 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 So it was just, you know, you don't expect a 36 hour travel day. To get to New York. To get to New York. We could have gone to, we could have gone like almost all the way around the world. We, we could have gone, we could have touched South Africa and, and back. For sure, could have gone to Europe for sure. I don't know, and back. We could have touched South Africa. Europe and back, I think so. Definitely. Yeah, Europe and Definitely. back for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. But like, also there was something so, uh, because the, the flight attendants and the staff and the team were just so like nice. Oh my God, it was very and, much like a, we're all in this together kind of attitude. Yeah, and I'm so like, it was a small like glimmer of hope for people that we didn't get like the person who was, um, why can't you, and like, I get it. Everyone's yeah. frustrated, everyone's, but like for they whatever- also, Like when we deplaned too, and like we were just waiting at the gate for a while, they let people get off the plane to reschedule their flight if they totally. needed to, which was good. Totally, but I was like, you know how like you just like, I feel like anymore because you've seen so many videos that people just lose their shit oh on God. flights. Yeah, like the guy who had duct tape to the seat. Yeah, and then also that, that staff apparently got in trouble. Um, no, I think they went on administrative leave until, Still. no, no, it ended up being okay. I All can't right, remember. Yeah, 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 I'm good. pretty sure it ended up being okay. At any point in time, I'm I was throwing, a, I was I'm throwing a, yeah. a hissy fit and I can't get control of my body. Feel free to duct tape my ass to my seat and go, now you're going to sit there because that's your only option. I will keep that in mind for next time you yeah, have a, a let me know. temper tantrum. <laughs> let me know. Well, just like I, I have flown, a, a, I have flown more than most people my age mm -hmm. and I've flown some pretty shitty, 
back of the plane economy, just basic, because that's all I could afford. And then I was just like, that's, that's what I'm doing. You're a tall dude to be an economy. Yeah, I'm, I told myself very early on, I believe it was like one of the flights out here when initially I was like, Jeremy, I think you're gonna have to be wealthy because you I don't, don't fit in this chair. I don't fit an economy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was my that's been my motive to to make enough money to, to always not, to yeah. always afford business class. Right. Right. Um okay, well let's let's uh let's skip past that was our that was our nightmare travel day from hell. And also like as an anxious traveler, like having to do the travel day twice is my worst fucking nightmare. Um and I, I did I did shockingly well. If you have an equally um ironically or just terrible travel story, throw it in the comments. I, oh my I, God, please like, make us feel better about yeah, this. Yeah, I like a little bit of just, and also even whether it's it's recent or older, I the stories I've heard of people who've had struggle days with traffic could be movies. Oh my God, it could have been a movie. Yeah. it could have. You know what the movie would have been? Us taking off, forcing them to take off 10 minutes with the whole door thing and then we all get sucked out. Yeah, Final Destination shit. Oh my God, on Twitter the other day, I saw this, uh, this flight where someone, for whatever reason, uh -huh. was traveling with a fucking tarantula and it had what? climbed out of no. the bag. Yes, no. yes, yes. That's my Blumhouse nightmare shit. Oh my God, shit. no, I watched the video on Twitter. And so it was somehow stashed in a bag in like the overhead compartment. And it had, cr this is like some snakes on a plane shit, except for tarantulas. And the person who like, I don't even know what ended up happening to them, but like it was footage of the tarantula, just like climbing along the cracks of the overhead compartments. Oh. I no. would punch a hole through the window and eject myself. I know that I think a lot of tarantulas aren't that dangerous to humans. I think a lot of them are actually quite harmless. Uh -huh. I'll, I would irrationally scream and run the other way. And I would, I would think about, can I open this door and just jump out? I did a collab once with RCL Beauty, Rachel Levin. Okay. And I, we were shooting and we went into one of her rooms to go like shoot another clip of the video. And she was like, do you want to meet my tarantula? And I was like, bitch, what do you mean? I was like, also, is there a tarantula in this room that we're cur like currently filming in? And she was like, yeah, I forget what his name was, but then she pulled this tarantula, terranium out of her closet where this tarantula, if she, I think she like brought him out. I like beeline, I think I stood at like, the door frame while she hit, like held the tarantula. Yeah, I'd be in the next zip code. And I, it was like, this is the most random day. Like, I think it was one of the first times we'd ever actually like hung out, hung out like outside of like chatting on the internet. And uh -huh. I was like, girls like having a great time, but I need you to get that fucking tarantula out of the same room as me because I, I'm not okay. I'm I, not okay with this environment. I, I know enough to know that our fears are probably based in some irrational whatever. It's, it's, it's the, it's the, Here's my thing is that like- things, what's your, Hey, what's your thing with tarantulas? Things with, no, 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 it's a leg thing. So things that have no legs, I think are unpredictable and scary. Worms and snakes, don't fucking like them. Okay. Eels, unpredictable, don't like them. Make okay. me like, they, they're squirmy and they make me squirmy. Okay. And then things with too many legs, centipedes mm. and spiders, too mm. many legs. What about millipedes? It's, oh, what's it? Millipedes are just smaller centipedes? No, I think they can both be pretty big. Yeah, but like, I think, that would make sense. A millimeter and a centi and a centimeter, right? Millipede, centipede. I don't. I don't think that's I don't related. Think they were at and like I don't think they were. That's not related. You don't think? No. What? I don't think so. We're I mean, gonna Google this after. Could be Please wrong. let us know if we've got any fact um, check us below. Um, you know how their <laughs> podcasts do a fact check and then Afterwards? like uh, and then we just go. Yeah. You guys let us know. You guys let us know. You guys are the fact checkers. Um, anything with too many legs yeah. sketches me out as well too because it's like you don't even know what way they're gonna go because they could go any way really quickly. You know what I know that you don't like any of necks. Yeah. Necks. No necks. <laughs> You know, see that frenulum, see how it just goes from body to, to head to what I, what is it? looks like almost the chin of the penis. Right. Yeah, no neck, that's, no neck. that's, that's ideal. Like for the boring. seals that are just like a face on a round, um, like uh, lard of a body, like that is my ideal. Anyone that's watched um, some of the Try Guys videos, it seems to come up all the time when we do Try Guys videos where I don't want things to have necks. Necks, got it. Yeah. Well, that's one for the, the deep cut listeners. Yeah, that's then. the deep cut listeners okay. that I don't like necks. So no legs, not okay. Too many legs, not okay. Too many necks, also not okay. Okay, so you're looking in the two to four category. Right, we, two to four is good, two to Got four it. is good. Six, sometimes okay, but it's- uh, Just keep it two to four. Yeah, two to four, two yeah. to four is good, makes you feel okay. Yep. Okay, so our home garage gym is like getting like maybe, I don't know, four or five days of the week use for me. Um, I don't know about you, Jeremy, but um, I'm, so I'm back on my workout grinds. Did you just say workout grind? I'm on my workout grinds. <laughs> Anyways, finding time in our busy schedules can make working out tough, which is why Peloton has become such a lifesaver. 
With Peloton, you can start building fitness into your routine with thousands of cardio and strength classes that take as little as 15 minutes. Plus, the original Peloton bike now costs $400 less, so now is the perfect time to start taking those goals and make them a reality. I personally am someone who just like crushes a workout in the morning. If I'm gonna work out, it's gotta be morning. So I've just gotten into the routine of hopping on as soon as I wake up. With their inspiring instructors, you can find what motivation style fits you. They also have bomb music curated classes with artist collaborations and instructor curated playlists. The music experience is seriously special. And the fact that it fits both Lauren and me, M. Impressive. With an endless variety of live and on-demand cycling classes, live on-demand strength yoga and stretching classes off the bike, you'll keep coming back for more. Experience motivation like never before with the Peloton bike. Now $400 less. Go to OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. When it comes to running successful businesses, we are always striving to do better and keep things running smoothly. And Monday.com is here to help. From managing internal processes, planning and tracking long-term goals, and collaborating across teams, it's an easy first step to getting your team set up for achieving their goals. Monday.com WorkOS is a customizable platform that gives teams the ability to easily create the tools they need and want for their work. Talk software to me, Lauren. Oh, this is, yeah, this is it. This yeah, is get it for in you. there. The platform is super flexible and you can create a workflow from scratch or pick a template. You can automate tedious work in seconds, saving emails, meetings, and meetings about emails. This helps save you and your team time that can be used more efficiently. And who doesn't love to be efficient? Teams are more productive when they work together. Tap into the magic of your team with monday.com work OS. Sign up for your free two week trial at monday.com today. I've said it, I think in the last like two or three podcasts, and I will continue to say it because I am a personal fan of monday.com because it gives me my time back when it comes to being able to communicate with people that you do not have the same room, the same city, the same zip code, that you're not even close to them. You need to be able to have a solution that just works. And with over 100,000 businesses already using it, monday.com work OS pushes teams to do their best work. And that includes me. Whether you're a startup ready to become the next big thing or a global organization with hundreds of moving parts, we all have goals to meet. Create the perfect workflow for your team with monday.com work OS. To start your free 14 day trial, go to monday.com. Um, oh my God, you wanna talk about tea? I don't even know where to start. I t Take it away. Oh my God. Okay, so we, what did we do? So we got there, ordered room service, um, uh, immediately decided that we hate New York because our hotel is claustrophobic and- but That's not true. In fact- No, we actually, it was actually the total opposite. So Lauren and I both don't love New York. She definitely doesn't like it a lot more than me. Yeah. I enjoy the energy temporarily. Right. You don't enjoy the energy really ever at all. But- But this trip, Lauren's brain played tricks on her. I don't even know what was going, it might be the new anxiety medication. Might be. It also, I think was the fact that I wasn't doing any kind of like press day where normally yeah. you sit in an Uber every 30 minutes to go to like a new spot and answer like questions or whatever. Like the yeah. overall experience was much more fun. New York has the potential to be the most like intense version of whatever it is that you're doing uh -huh. all at once. Uh -huh. And also the bars are open till four, <laughs> which I am just not cut up for. But they're open till four, but there's some that are like five, six, like the after party stuff in oh LA God. starts at two, right. two thirty. where the after party in New York would start at 4.30. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I would be I'm here alive around no. if I had gone to college or had spent in real, York? real time oh my God. in New York. Imagine having an 8 a.m. class and having gone to an after party at 4.30. See, I almost think that would be easier because then you just like wouldn't go to sleep. Yeah, but then you'd be super fucked up when you got to, got to school. Like at least oh when you God. sleep a little bit, you like- Speaking of not sleeping, because how- Oh my God, this is gonna be a long podcast. We got shit to say. Guys, I'm so sorry. We have to catch you up. I am someone who would prefer like push through, then get too little, like an hour of sleep after not sleeping all day, uh -huh. that hour of sleep would wreck me, it would ruin, like my right. eye, I wake up you cranky, feel groggy. Yeah. Like my mind is not there where, although it's not probably healthy for me, I would rather pound some caffeine and just keep doing work, read or do something, and just keep my mind stimulated. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm getting anything done, but at least then I, could, I don't feel like I'm a cranky like bitch waking up with 45 minutes of sleep going, mm, rested, not at all. So when we didn't get onto the first flight, I had so much work that I didn't get done from the day because of just being distracted. I then just stayed up 
the whole day. Okay, so, okay, but like you could have gotten five hours of sleep. Like we're not talking like a potential 45 minutes. Like I, I logged four and a half hours of sleep. But like, it's, but to <laughs> me and like, maybe this is me being a good employee. And I just like, I didn't take Thursday off. So like I planned on working Thursday. Right, yeah. So I had work to do Thursday. I had people to respond, you know, like stuff. So like, maybe I just feel bad, but I'm just like, I had people that were counting on me to get things back to them on Thursday. So instead of like, trying to figure it out if I could do it on Friday. I just stayed up on Thursday night to Friday to do it all. You did surprisingly well for functioning the entire next day, all the way until 4 a.m. What, on well, what would have been- Well, don't skip, uh, don't skip okay. ahead. Okay, well, I'm just getting them excited. So I didn't sleep excited. on Friday- No, Thursday night. Thursday evening into Friday. Yeah. And then we got to, and I actually stayed up and did a bunch of work on the plane as well. Stupid. Well, that was stupid. stupid. But then we got to New York and got some food and then we're like, are we going out tonight? And I don't know how I did it but I just fucking went out. Oh my God. So tell, t t t <sighs> kick us off. Okay, so next story, next story. Guys, so we're so glad we, there's things to do. I know, to we, give oh, like, we need to do on. more things, Lit. Like, we do. We, this was so fun. We do, well, I, we, I, we're doing more things. We're doing more things for yeah. sure. This, I know this next week's already busy. Um, so- Also pause real quick. I Someone shouted this out the other day and, and I, I wanna appreciate it. They said, you know what's great about Lauren and Jeremy's podcast? Every other podcast, I have to listen at one and a half to two times to like feel like I'm like, my brain is like, Keeping up. is hearing um, <laughs> things at the level that I can bring it in. They go, they they don't make it so you don't have to do that. You can just listen at one X and it is fast oh, enough. I talk at 1.5 X just naturally. Same. Like when I talk fast on the podcast, that means that I'm actively thinking about talking slower. I mean, I'm sure our caption person is like thinking to themselves like 0.75 is probably pretty good. R oh yeah, 0.75 is probably like naturally right. where we should be. Uh -huh. at. Right. Uh, so went to go get some, so got room service, um, went to go grab drinks with a friend, again, who lives in LA and like lives probably 15 minutes from us. Maybe. That we haven't seen in months. Went to go meet up with them. Um, um, Had a couple of espresso martinis, my new favorite drink. I, you know what, it's so funny. I don't think, now that like you've started drinking espresso martinis, right. I see every bitch ever drinking espresso martinis. I don't I, know if it's just like a, a like a trend that's back and no, booming. No, I, I started the espresso martini. Oh, that was you single-handedly yeah. who started. No, I don't know when I had one at some point in time because I hate vodka. Yeah. It makes me a slutty bitch. I don't like it. And it doesn't really actually make me slutty. It just makes me like, I Bitchy? don't like it. It's gross. Oh. It doesn't, it's not a good time for me. Yeah. And I know it also, I just am so against the fact that if, if vodka is supposed to be a tasteless, odorless, odorless, like liquor, uh -huh. then why would anything cost more or less if it's all tasteless and odorless, which is all false anyway. I was gonna say, can confirm vodka tastes like ass. Even the most expensive vodka that I've ever had tastes like ass. Not good. But when you put espresso on top of it, buy vodka. Disgusting, both yeah. of them. Hey vodka, hey espresso. Okay, Get well, anyway, table. combined, And then you make those little beanos that float around. They do make beanos, yeah. And they float like little poops. Not, it's not oh, for me. Okay. It's not for me. Yeah. It's not for me. Don't ruin espresso martinis. Okay, go ahead. What's next? Well, so we got there, started slamming espresso martinis with our friends, meet some new people, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like meeting new people anymore is always like a, a game of like, are we going to be friends? Are we just meeting right now? Or am I ever going to see you again? Right. Or like, right. like, do we follow each other on Instagram? Totally. And also, or when you meet people that are from different cities, yeah. It's like, do we have enough in common? for me to get involved and get my hopes up. Right, <laughs> to be friends. <laughs> right, and so right, right, right. I feel like I actively now try and like listen, figure out if I like somebody and not like be like, oh, we're not gonna be friends. But like, there has to be like a moment where I'm like, did you just say, oh, we're going to be friends. Right. And a, a couple of the individuals that we met that night, I, they fell into that category. I just liked them. They yeah, were just like really great. Yeah, no, it ended up being a great night. Like we ended up in a group of really good people. Yeah, and Lauren has this thing where she's not great typically going out into a bunch of new places. And so like, I kind of feel like go and like, are you good? Anxiety's all right, great. Not a single problem all night. It I was, was chilling. It was like Lauren- Two nights in a row. Socialite Lord, Lord DIY was out and alive. It made us almost for a moment think that New York wasn't okay. hell on earth. <laughs> Oh my God. So like for anyone who's been to like Soho house or any of the other very invite only, you have to know somebody to get in, whatever, mm -hmm. they're either a really good or really just bad time. And so we ended up going to one, it wasn't Soho house, but we ended up going to one that was in New York that was very much invite only, which usually means they have marketed themselves to people who don't want to run into a bunch of like fans or have pictures taken of them okay. when they go out. Right. Which is why 
Um, I mean, it was pretty star studded. Yeah. It was the definition of like, like when I grew up watching Gossip Girl and like <laughs> you think of like a socialite scene. Yeah. I found myself in the middle of this socialite scene where I knew so many, who didn't know me obviously, because I'm the one that's out of place. Well, it also reminds me why, like when you see in, in a store, Gossip Girl is perfect for that. You, they would go to somewhere out, yeah. right? Yeah. And Wait, so I'm sorry, half the people that they know just happened to be there? Like, what are the chances? Half people This, that, this ha- literally happened. Half the people that yes. we know that live in LA or don't even live in LA anymore, but like lived in LA that moved to Nashville and Miami and this and that, everyone was there. So first off, two NBA players, James Harden and Blake Griffin were there. And like 6'9 on like a Google profile sounds really tall, but 6'9 in real life. I think for Blake Griffin's 6'11. 6'11? Yeah. They were- Huge, like towering over the entire room. Like they were massive. I'm tall. I'm objectively and statistically tall. tall. You're tall, you're a tall guy. But if I'm six, four and a real six, if I'm six, four Uh and someone's coming well over a half foot bigger than me. Towering. I mean, I feel so small. It's it's like, I genuinely, I have two heights in my head. People that are shorter than me and people that are taller than me. But like whatever Blake Griffin is. Yeah. Ne- whatever, it's the next level. Own category. Yeah. Own category. Yeah. 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 And like their presence is like, there's no way they could ever hide when they walk in. Oh my God. Anywhere. No, there's no way. When no you way. were standing like a fucking skyscraper like that. Oh my God. And girls obviously just like gravitate towards them because they're rich NBA players. Um, I think they probably have more going on for them as well. Great personalities as yeah. well. Great, great, great personalities. But I will say watching them operate it in parties. Mm-hmm. Smooth, so oh, yeah. smooth. But also like, how would it not be easy to navigate when everyone wants to talk to you? I think it makes it very difficult when everyone wants to talk to you. It's very easy, I feel like to be rude when like everyone's like waiting and like creating a queue next I to guess. you. I yeah, guess, yeah, I guess. And also I think it's very easy to like assume people will be disingenuous when people are just like have a preconceived notion before you walk up to them at a party. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, am I giving them my, too much in favor of, of the NBA player? I just <laughs> no, think- no, maybe they're great. I, have no, I literally have no idea. I, I mean, have no idea. It was just like so weird to be the same party as an NBA player because that's not something that I saw for myself in my future. Really? No, not I mean, quite. It, was not, it wasn't in the- uh, Eighth the, grade baller Jeremy, I think in his wildest dreams felt that way. I mean, you know, point guard, point guard, Lord DIY in grade six also felt that way. L- Lil, Lil DIY? Lil DIY. We'll cross you on the court. I yeah. get it. Yeah, insert and one photo, footage of Lauren nope, from seventh grade. Okay. That's okay. No, that no is archives. Okay, okay, fine. But like uh, watching them. At, oh shit, babe! You know who would look really good running with luggage and a backpack in an airport? Blake Griffin and James Harden. That's true. I bet they would. Their legs would be taking about four steps at the rate that mine could take. Uh, no, sorry, I would be taking four steps at the rate that their legs would be taking one. Yeah, they would actually just actually have to walk to the gate as we were sprinting. Is so they a, don't even have to run because they just look cool walking because their legs are so long. And I know we've talked about this before. Is there a cutoff for too tall? For me? Yeah. Um, it, well, it's not gonna insult me. Um, to be honest, yeah? I think it'd be more associated with dick size and not height. What do you mean? Like- There's a cutoff because the dick was too big? Yeah. And I, I don't- You're right at the top of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 because I think it'd be fine to date a really tall person. Like, although yeah. it'd be inconvenient for like that person to like live their life, I'm sure. I guess I genuinely feel like every time that you have a camera and you're vlogging next to me, you don't get my face in it anyway. So like, I think I'm already tall, like past the like, oh, look how Oh, we could never convenient. be a, we could never be a YouTube vlog couple. That's for sure. Okay, rude, rude. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a family channel on yeah. next up on our itinerary yeah. career decisions. Yeah, once I take the next couple, you know, companies public, yeah. that's going to be me. A vlog channel? What's up DIY gang? It's Jeremy. You, you want to say Tiffany? You're like, what's freaking up, guys? What's freaking up? That is not what I want to say. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Tiffany because that's you always do tips and no, like that. I was in a moment there, dad DIY was coming out of my mouth, but that, that's already, that's already been taken. Assigned. Yeah. yeah. You want to be dad DIY too? You could be dad DIY too. That's adorable. Well, he's already, he's dad, dad, dad DIY one, one, right? Right. So you're dad yeah. DIY too. By the way, someone did save plus one Jeremy for me. I know. That is the nicest thing that Tilly's have ever done for us. Yeah. Oh my God. That's adorable. Yeah. That makes me feel like Tilly's? the most warm hearted sense of community ever. So Got thank you to um, whoever grabbed uh, plus one Jeremy on Instagram. We love you. That's big. That's big, big. <laughs> but yeah, I um, watching them navigate at the party was as like entertaining to just watch as mm-hmm. it was like to entertain. Like, Cause like when you like look out and you just see famous people, you just, you have this, either you have no idea what you think in their mind or you have like a very like specific thing of like what you think they would act and operate like. 
And usually you're wrong. Oh and, my God, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And so it was just like fun to just like be out in the world and just like have people spill drinks on me and, and you know, see famous people yeah. navigate social scenarios and all the while just get to be a bystander of life. It was like such a weird combination of like NBA players, some like random rappers, and then also models because obviously it's New York Fashion Week. So there's a ton of like super tall, just like drop dead gorgeous uh, girls there that I've are modeling. I've never felt so average height at a party. Yes, yeah, seriously. Uh -huh. <laughs> Welcome to my life. What's it feel like to just be part of the pack? Well, cause like what, I guess any girl who's five foot, 10, 11, six foot, yeah. in heels oh, is gonna sure. be about my height. Right, yeah, yeah, in right. heels, yeah, for sure. Yeah, For sure, and I mean, there were so many, so many girls that were that height at you, that party. You, you look around, you go, there are quite a few six foot, like women. height women in, in this, this place. Yeah. Yes, so NBA players, models, TikTokers, yeah. some DJs, some rappers, some YouTubers. Some rude then, ass fucking people. Oh my God, we're about to get into it. About to get into it. You know, I wish that we weren't so, um, I wish we would be fine with being canceled every once in a while. Cause I would just love to just oh, ask some I would love to out some shit right now. I would, I mean, I would love it for a quick moment and then regret it very quickly. Yeah. Um, so it, I'm not it, gonna do that. Yeah, uh, we could, they could be having a bad day. They didn't maybe know they were being giant. Bitches. Anyway, why don't you go ahead and take it away? So we ran into a TikToker who is um, well-known, who is popular. No, I don't know she was. Has millions of followers on TikTok. No, and no, I'm, I'm, you guys are gonna press me and I'm just not gonna say who it is because I don't wanna beef like that. Although I, wish I, I would so like to hard. serve some tea that we don't need to, to oust anybody. Right. She fucking sucked. She fucking sucked. So met this TikToker and I had a few like mutual friends with them. And so I was like, oh, like you're a friend of this person, so-and-so. So I feel like that's always like a really like solid stable place to like Build start a bridge. a bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And they like kind of were like, okay with that part of the conversation. And then I mentioned something else that we had in common and they like were almost offended that I brought it up and like not to go into too much detail, but it was something very, very like neutral. Right. And they were like almost offended that I had referenced like this particular topic. And so I was like, okay, um, got it. They changed the topic, said like how cute my outfit was, whatever. So I was like, oh, okay. Like they said my outfit's cute. Like that's a, it's a warm, a warm response. Like obviously uh -huh. they wanted to like, just avert whatever the conversation was. Said my outfit was cute. I'm like, okay, whatever, like fine. And so like they were coming into our group as well. True. Like they were, it wasn't just like us all standing around. Everyone was kind of like in neutral territory. Like they were coming into our group. That's right. And our click. Our, our click. Our table at Our lunch. motherfucking click. Yeah. And- You know, you can sit with us. I, we had not, hadn't necessarily said that she could sit with us, but she sat anyway. She sat anyway. Yeah. And, which is fine. You can sit with us. You can be, you can sit with us if you're nice to us. Right. And you so, can even sit with us if you're just neutral. Even if you're just neutral. I yeah. would love neutral. Neutral's fine. Be neutral to me all you want. I'm I'm too sensitive for anything but neutral. But you know what? <laughs> Actually, neutral's super easy because then there's no commitment. There's yeah. no strings attached. Yeah. Neutral's great. Neutral's great. So like I'm next to this girl. And so I was like, oh, like I'll continue conversation. I was like, oh, like, where are you from? Da, 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 da. Like what, how's, how's New York Fashion Week been for you? How's the weekend been? And this bitch had absolutely no interest in having conversation. Like I, I've i never felt so socially shut down in the sense that like I was getting hit with like one word answers that had a very hard stop period at the end of it. and the bare minimum of conversation was not even possible for this person. And it just felt like one of those situations where if I'm trying to word this the right way to not sound like douchey about this, but like if they saw how many followers I had on any of my social media accounts, their, their mood and their attitude towards me would have instantly been different. Yeah. The, and it's tough because I feel like you ride the fine line of trying to build bridges and find reasons to connect, but not lead with that because- Right, I'm not gonna be like, hey, I'm Lauren DIY. I have this many followers on this platform and right. now this many- and Because it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But the problem is if you don't lead with that, then sometimes I think that the people who, especially if they're newer to the game, right. just getting into this, uh -huh. that's the thing that, although they're propped up on the most, they don't want to like, that would be their ingredient and their key to be like, oh, they were braggart. They were the ones right. that was like, like bringing us up. Like, no, 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 I'm trying to, in every way possible to tell you how much we have in common so that we could, you know, see what- Talk uh, about actual things that yeah. we both experience and stuff. But instead the thing that I'm trying to not say that I know would just be like, would flip the switch or whatever. Yeah. 
and the thing that you would pretend wouldn't be the important thing is the only thing that like, okay, got it. So in case I'm just, unless I'm just gonna go, hey, uh, this is why you should care about me, or at least why I think you would think you should care about me. Like, yeah. we'll just sit here and awkwardly not talk about anything. Is I, that what you want? And it was weird because too, like I saw some girls go up to this girl to be like, hey, like I love your content. And like, she was pretty nice to those people. I was like, okay, so you're treating me like a, like a fan that doesn't want to like bow down to you. Right. It's basically what it was. Like I was trying to have like real conversation and like right. make, you know, just like have fucking conversation. And I genuinely think that she thought that you were a fan that was trying to get too much of her attention yes. and was, were yes. not speaking to her in yes. the way that she felt that she yes. deserved to be spoken to. Cause she to. was super nice to people who wanted to like shower her in compliments. Uh -huh. Well, also she was a lot nicer to me than she was you. Oh, well, hundred percent. Right. Cause you're, yeah. you're a hot, good looking guy. That's very sweet. It's right. Well, it's, it's, it's true. Shibu. I, it's you know, true. maybe the the bridge that I built was just a little bit friendlier. Although I'm trying to think of what bridge I built and I don't really think I put much effort into it. No, 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 but no. She seemed to be pretty nice Yeah. to me. Yeah, right. So it, it was really enjoyed good looking males and she really enjoyed fans that wanted to shower her in compliments. Everyone else was- You did not fall into that category. Was not in that category. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, not to say that like, I wasn't like, oh, I love your content because I did mention that, but I wasn't, I was trying to be more of an equal, I guess. Yeah. And that wasn't quite what she was interested in. Yeah, well, it sucks because like, in LA in particular, it's very easy to, oh, well, I'll just use the cheat code or the shortcut to just like, if I say this, you'll probably care. And that way we can form a friendship. But it's uh -huh. like, if I have to form the friendship that way, I don't wanna be friends with I you. I don't wanna be friends with you. Right, exactly, 100%. And so, and Cause like- nobody likes the person that just walks up and just like, hey, here's why I'm cool. Right. Because every no cool- No one fucking likes that person. Every real cool that person- That means that you're not cool. Doesn't have to say yes, that. Yes, exactly. That means yeah. that you were not cool. And like, I want to be like, oh, like she might've been super drunk, but like, this was the beginning nope, of the night. Not that drunk. And also we saw her drunk at the end of the night and she was much ruder than. <laughs> yeah, then, then I then everyone fell into the rude category. Right, yeah. everyone, you're, and then she hated everyone. Yeah, then yeah. she was just mad at life. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are back with one of our favorite sponsors, Better Help. You know, Lauren and I are big supporters of prioritizing your mental health and Better Help is here to help you do just that. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, allowing you to connect in a safe, private online environment. Throughout my journey with anxiety, BetterHelp has been there with me every step of the way. Being able to get the help that I need from my own home has been crucial during this time. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counseling done securely online. You can send a message to your counselor at any time and receive timely and thoughtful responses. They also provide the option to schedule weekly video or phone sessions. We know sometimes getting help can be a bit out of your budget, but BetterHelp is less expensive than the other services and they also offer financial aid. This service is offered worldwide and it is convenient, affordable, and professional. Anything you share with your counselor is confidential. Find your particular expertise you need online and do not limit yourself to the counselors in your area by signing up for better help. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash WT9. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash W-T-9. Lauren, what do we love? Moose. Okay, besides moose. Our chilies. Yes, but you know what? I'll just answer this for you. It's fine. We love saving money. And our next sponsor, Chime, is an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than 10 billion, b -b 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 billion with a B, Lauren, billion in billion. overdraft fees with Spot Me fee-free overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. When your bank account is running low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. Preach. Overdraft fees have gotten way out of hand. In 2019, traditional banks took $11 billion in overdraft fees. That's another B, 11 bill, 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 billion. Not cute. Chime does things differently and is here to help you. And just through us and like our friends, we've successfully like gotten a solid four or five people onto Chime because they're obsessed with the flexibility that Chime offers. Now you deserve to have financial peace of mind. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and does not affect your credit score. That's big. Get started today at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. 
Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank and a member's FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased by up to $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members use of Spot Me versus $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate checking account survey and CRL June 2020 overdraft fees report. So that was my encounter with a TikToker. And um, I have a few friends who are big fans of this girl. And I'm gonna be honest, I went and burst their bubble. I was like, yo, just met this girl, total sucks. bitch. Total bitch, sucks, you know, sucks. You know what else is funny? And this is like kind of unrelated, but related. And it was like a theme over the weekend. Do you remember back in high school when there were a, a limited supply of guys and a limited supply of, of girls. And no matter what you liked, who what you were interested, who you're interested, whatever, you all kind of had the same dating pool. So I barely dated in high school. But everybody else then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we also, I was randomly in a grade that had very few like guys kind of. Okay. And so then all the guys that were there probably dated at least two, three, four girls throughout their high school career. Kind of. What do you mean? Kind I don't know. Of. Like our grade just like didn't, a lot of people dated outside of our grade and, and like outside of our high school because we really? randomly had like, so like kind of like in like the quote unquote, like popular ish group of people. Which I'm sure you were the top of. I was, I was mid tier. Were you mid tier adjacent popular? Yeah, I was mid tier. Like I was friends with some of the popular kids like outside of that group, but was right. so still invited to those parties. Okay. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I hung out with like my own group of friends that was, you know, we were like mid tier. Okay, got it. And so anyway, so even in like the popular group, like there were like three guys in that group Three okay. and a shit ton of girls. Got it. And a shit ton of girls. And so actually, so even outside of like dating within the grade, people would date within the high school, but not in the same grade. Got it. And, or like outside of the high school. Okay. Yeah. I, and I feel like that was too, I, I liked dating girls who didn't go to my high school a lot more, but I just, I don't know if that's just like how the, like the cards fell or whatever. But the amount of times I feel like you just got used to like, and this is so normal when you're in high school, like a buddy of yours who you are good friends with, almost like in an active competition, like mm -hmm. think just the most like barbaric animal, just like- Like, like mean girls, like that scene in Mean yeah, Girls. Just like dick measuring contest yeah. of just like, who's gonna wind up with what girl? And yeah. then like things just flop and it's, it's like, uh, yeah. but I feel like I'm not used to that in the adult world as much. Okay. And going to this party, it was like clout on clout, people with, it, it was like watching. Oh yeah, yeah I was. Yeah. I felt like I was sitting there as a bystander watching like the most like basic human function, like who is this person going to pick this evening and vice versa. And just like watching this like sweet 16 tournament just unfold before my eyes. And it was fascinating. It was fascinating. Like some of, some of like Kylie's Jenner's best friends were there. Um, 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 some exes of some other famous people were there. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, it was fucking the most insane people watching that I've ever experienced in my entire life. And you can also tell that people are so ready to not be, I, I, can you imagine if you had been single and like were just like isolated by yourself the last year and a half and you haven't been really going out and this is one of the first times you're like getting all dialed up to go out and do whatever it is that you wanna do. Mm. I feel like if I had been like sitting there single for a year and a half beforehand, I would just be like on the prowl. On the prowl. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I could just, I watched this thing. Like people were just thirsty. Yeah, people were definitely thirsty. There was also so many girls that I follow on Instagram that are just like random, like super hot Insta baddies who right. were there. And I was like, huh. Most of them were like very, very stunning in person as well too, which is like always like nice to see that they don't like filter the shit out of themselves. Yeah. But it was like just so weird, like seeing so many, it was so weird. It was like the definition of a gossip girl socialite moment. That I wish that we had had a GoPro on our heads just for the Tillies. I didn't take a single picture that night. That's how you know Not it was a good time. single picture. It's a good time. You know what's better though is that I was thinking that if we had been tagged in a location, the like the pieces could be pieced together. Yeah better of like who else was there to figure out like who like the bitchy TikToker was. Um, but anyways, great time, grand old time. We stayed until 3.30 in the morning. Mom and dad were out late. Mom and dad were out late. Jeremy still hadn't slept. And I I want to give myself credit, but I also am like, okay, well that means it was only really like 12.30 vibes for like West Coast time. But sure. I also only slept like four hours and like, I'm a bitch who needs sleep. Yeah, Lauren's not someone who can like- I don't function well. Push through. Sleep. No, you don't, no, and no. even if she does push through, you don't want her to. Oh, no, 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 no one wants yeah. to push through it. Yeah. I, I need my sleep. Yeah. I need my sleep for sure. But you navigated great. Yeah. We went home. Oh my God, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God, there's one more good story from that night. Go on. The uh, So there was another YouTuber who I'm a big fan of. Oh, and fuck. 
We're guys, we're only on the first night of our trip. Like this isn't even the first full day of the trip. I know. So I will say this is this is probably the most drama that we had the entire trip though this night. Probably. In such a short amount of time too, in Alcohol one location. Helps. Alcohol does help. Yeah. Um, so there was a YouTuber that I really liked and I went up to her and I was like, um, oh my God, hi, like I'm such a big fan. I love your content. And um And real quick, pause. Why oh, yeah, did you even, why'd you even go up to her? I'm a big fan. No, because I literally- Yeah, I know. I was too, I was too fucking nervous. Even, even being drunk, I was still too nervous to go say hi. I'm such a, I, I'm so bad at like I approaching but, that conversation. like grabbed you, you by the though, ear and led you over. I wonder if I have like PTSD from people like the other TikTok just being fucking mean when you like go up and have fan behavior and like not even fan behavior, but just like going up and say that like you respect what they do. Some people are so right. fucking rude. And I feel like I've had totally. that experience happen a few times. So maybe I just like, I'm like scared to do it now because I'm too sensey. And like when that shit happens, I'm like, I'm never gonna tell anyone again that I like they're gone in. I try and find like the Bell Porch thing. I try and find a one-liner mm -hmm. that requires no response by them. Right. That like they have to think about. Right. That's why I'm like, build a bitch was a fucking bop. And they can say nothing and, or even just nod. And, if it, if it, and I yeah. said it in a way that was like, I don't want anyone around uh -huh. to hear that I'm saying, cause I don't want anyone to be like, hey, that is about, I, I say that cause I want it her to be able to do this and it's totally And the acceptable. interaction's over, right? And, yeah. and they're probably like, okay, cool. Like got the recognition, like I'm right. glad you enjoyed and it. And if they but say that's something the back, end. great. But like, it doesn't require the them to be like, thank you. That's the move for yeah. sure. So I went up to this girl and I was like, hey, I love your content so much. Like, I, I just think it's really incredible. After Jeremy had like basically pushed me in her direction to like go say, yeah. To Horse, say water, drink. And, <laughs> and- um, Throws in pool. She was like, oh, what's your name? And I was like, oh, like it's Lauren. And I like mumbled something about doing YouTube. And, you and, then, YouTube well. and, then, and then and then you go, you go, you go. Well, and I go, I said something along the lines of, oh, I know exactly what I said. I said, okay, uh, 9 million subscribers. So don't be so humble. And this individual. She, oh my God, she, this is, she I looked like, at me and looked at Lauren and she said, well, I've got 10 million. It's easier to be like, oh, it's actually 10 million. To correct me. To as correct if, you. As if the number that I had said was for her. Her channel. And then I go, oh, no, no, no. I meant her. She's got 9 million subscribers. Oh my God. And you could see the reaction that goes, did I just correct this person who was trying to, once again, build a bridge and, and speak Compliments. up. And also just like gas up oh. his girlfriend because she was being way too humble. And instead, now I sound like an absolute fucking douchebag. For like, oh no, no, I have ten million subscribers, not nine million. And oh, also, oh my god. Of, and the, of course, this person then was like, oh wait, what's your what is your name? Yeah, what's your name? What's what your they channel? Say? They were like, oh, like oh my god, yeah, wait, what's your channel? Like, oh, I think I've heard of you before yeah. or something like that. They, they have to. You with could interest. tell that they felt like she felt like embarrassed, which I mean, she kind of should be, but like. Oh, it was like a, it was just such a cringy moment to like watch back. Like if that had happened to me, that moment would play on replay for the rest of my life to be like, holy shit, I fumbled so hard in and this situation. Like, obviously I don't know this person personally, but from what I do know, I think that they would be uh, like, when they corrected you, it was not like in their nature to be bitchy. No, no, no. I think this person's actually really nice. Yeah. Like I think they probably are a good person. And instead they, turned a joke of like, oh no, it's actually 10 million into like a, oh wait, now that came off wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, you, no, yeah. I can't, like, and like just flipping the script, I can't imagine trying to correct someone on like my resume right. when they weren't talking about right, me. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, no, no. They kind of like walked themselves back into something that was not so great. Yeah. But no, I, I really think I can't wait for that person being like, oh my God, that was really funny. Like I still really like them. I still love what they do. The TikToker on the other hand, I'm going to be like, yo, fuck your content. I'm not watching a second more of it. Gross. Yeah. 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 Um, too good. Oh my God. It, that moment still plays over in my head and just, it's it's more awkward, awkward every single time. I hope there's a, a, a time and a place where we can uh, meet this individual again. And have the conversation uh -huh. about this conversation. Cause it'll be funny. Oh my God. It was, it was hilarious. So we go to bed we wake up at noon the next day. Thank God you need that slumber more than anything. I did. Oh my God. And we spent the day doing a little bit of shopping. A little bit of shopping. A bit of shopping. I met so many subscribers and it's been so long since I've been like out in the world meeting people. Like I've met people here and there like at the Melrose Trading Post and like, you know, random stores. But like, no. I haven't been like out and about on a day like this where I've met so many people. And if was, your ego needed a boost, th that would have all you needed. Oh my God. I was like, am, oh my God, am I still relevant? Like, no, this is so nice. I guess. <laughs> You, you forget sometimes how many people 
I mean, I've always, everyone's always like, well, what does it feel like to have this many followers? And I'm like, I don't know. You like, you just don't really like ever get the context of it. Cause you never right. see that many people in a room. Well, you're, at not, one time. you're not a performer. You don't do totally. You don't this do live. shows and like, concerts. And, our friends that are musicians yeah. who are doing sold out shows, even if it's like 500, 600 cap rooms, not even mm -hmm. like arenas. Like we have 500 people screaming at you in applause at the end of a show, show that you do, you know, a hundred times a year. Like right. you feel it. Right. We don't feel it. Right. No, yeah, <laughs> you, don't you, see you, it. you don't feel it. Yeah. But it, I mean, it was just so nice. Like, I think this is actually so much better because you have to have like real conversations and yes. I met so many amazing people this past week. And so if you said, hi, thank you so much. I truly enjoyed it. And it was so refreshing to like be able to have conversations again um, with viewers. It's so funny. Cause I, when Lauren gets stopped in the middle of public and like I, I'm in the way physically, I'll just like tuck myself into a corner. Cause the last thing I want to do is like, <laughs> I don't want to be like sitting there looming over the conversation. Right. But also like, like in a New York street, it's really hard to stop in the middle of the sidewalk right. without getting just absolutely pummeled. But like finding the middle balance of like, I don't know if this individual, this individual could have watched your channel before me. Right. They could have been the biggest, like, you know, Lorex fan in the world. And like, right. whether I think that's dumb or not, like, you know what, they, they were a fan of him. So like, yeah. I'm actually gonna be like, here's my presence. I'm uh -huh. gonna taint and color yeah. your conversation <laughs> with someone that you obviously have spent right. time with. And so it's always funny. Cause I feel like at the end of every conversation, like either goes like two ways, like there's like an awkward, okay, bye. Or like, hi, Jeremy. <laughs> that's up? exactly what it was. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> hi, Jeremy. What's up? <laughs> like, no, okay, so cool. cute. You're checking in lately. Got it's it. So cute. It's just very cute. It's so cute. Oh my God, it was so wholesome. I had so much fun and it made my heart so happy. Cause I mean, like I genuinely don't think that meet and greets will ever come back. Yes, they will. You think? Yes. Oh God, I just feel like these fucking anti-vax hoes are gonna make just COVID last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It, it will come back. Oh God. Um, the world is a is a, a resilient place. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. Cause yeah, I, I just like can't envision a day okay, anytime soon. You really soon. like me. I feel like you enjoy meeting people organically a lot more than meet and greets. I, I do enjoy meeting people more organically. You know, it's less like forced and it's less like time limits placed upon me. Literally meetings. someone yeah. going, okay, 45 seconds, gone, next, move, next, next. next. Yeah, 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 I know. I but know. also it feels more organic to run into someone naturally yeah. than like, like, okay, to there's, stand, there's for me to stand in one place time. and people just like right. filter through for or photos. Like a brand that's yeah. like, hey, we got a hundred people in here. We're trying to get through as many as possible. We oh, have yeah. to get through all, it's just like, whoa, like that's not human. Totally. Yeah. No, you definitely feel like a, a very large piece of product yeah. um, during those. Or, um, a, you know, very tiny, cute, well-packaged product. That's so nice. That's so nice. I was about me, but yeah, you too. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. But that was fun. And also New York people are just like more like, uh, Everyone was so cool. The amount yeah. of girls that I met that go to um, like Parsons Fashion School. And yeah. I was like, you watch my videos? Like that's a fucking flex. That some of my viewers go to Parsons. What was the the, sh the school you didn't get to in Canada that would be like the Parsons of Canada? Um, I don't know what the fashion school would be. I applied, I didn't, actually didn't even end up applying to an art school. Got it. Um, but I- that OCAD. OCAD. Yeah. Could Ontario her, College for Art and Design. Could have had her OCAD. I mean, I went to I went to this like open portfolio thing and I got absolutely obliterated and I was like, cool, won't ever do that again. So then I didn't apply to OCAD, but I had a ton of friends who went there, but it really, you know what though? Everything happens for a reason. If I'd gone into OCAD, I probably would have liked my program more. I wouldn't yep. have been deeply depressed. wouldn't have started my YouTube channel. And now we wouldn't be together. Yeah, wouldn't be together. And instead here. you were a uh, distinguished alum at X university. Right. Love it. Love it. Love but that it for fun. me. It was fun. <laughs> it was good. And so then that night we went for, so did some shopping, um, walked around Soho, went back and got ready, went for dinner. And we went for dinner at a, um, I mean, it was, it was in a really nice place. Yeah, it was, it was cute. A, yeah, it was a nice place. And we went with another friend. And so um, the tables now, and I mean, I'm sure that everyone has seen this, like have those plexiglass dividers between them right. now for the most part. So we were in this little like half semicircle booth and there was other semicircle booths on both sides of us, plexiglass in between us. We're having and dinner. People are like, why is that an important part of the story? Yeah, oh, this is this Let is a key you. piece. This is a key piece to the story. Having dinner, and um, I, I mean, we're not really paying attention to people around us because, like, also you have fucking plexiglass. Like, you're in basically a fishbowl of your own little group, which I really, honestly, don't mind. Don't hate whatsoever. it. Don't hate it. Really don't. You, mind. No one enjoys when like you can like hear the person's conversation to the right of you because yeah. one person's just got that piercing voice that right. just goes right through. Yeah, yeah, totally. I really don't hate the fishbowl effect that no. COVID has provided us. So we're eating and the table to our left. And I don't know what I heard or saw first. I know what I felt. Right. A small earthquake. A small earthquake. And so I, 
I, I, I, again, I don't even know what I saw or heard first, but so if I could watch this back in slow motion, here's what I think happened. Okay. So there's a bunch of girls and guys in this um, in this little semicircle booth. Right next to us. And right next to us, there's a girl and a guy that are very obviously together. Another guy who somehow plays some kind of role in either like this love triangle or just beefing with the guy in this relationship. Going back to the whole thing where like you're a dick measuring contest to your friends sometimes with girls and like- Yes, pick me, pick me. Yes, but and so he didn't get picked. He did not- He, he was did not, not get picked. For all those who have not been picked first string for dodgeball, same thing, except for- You didn't have this reaction most likely. Yeah. When you didn't get picked. So he picks up two wine glasses off the table because the table's already set. I think there's gotta be a plate in there too. I'm sure there had to be a plate with the yeah. sound that it made. So maybe two wine glasses, one like two in one hand and a plate and fucking whips them at this dude. And so glass just goes shattering. And this guy is dir like directly you, you're behind sitting back me. to back with this yeah. guy. So I felt just this like, <clears throat> like, and just smattering of glass. And I'm not kidding, the plexiglass behind us, like you saw glass just like sliding down and the divider, like there was like um like the flat top of the tops yes. of like the benches behind us, just absolutely covered in ceramic and glass. The, 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 the everyone's getting up from the table and they're like, like, like well, shaking off glass. We looked behind us. Cause like, it was like, it was such a big noise. You're oh like, my what God. the fuck was that? And you just see some dude just like, Storming off. Oh, great. And the storming off. Like exactly. A little, like a three year old tenter tent. You know like, what, though? Like, not walking as fast as I thought he would be for someone who just like destroyed the restaurant. I mean, it, and I can't imagine this individual has done that to that group of friends before because there's no way oh, something yeah. like that happens. I don't know who is so important to me in my life that that happens and I go, yeah. you're forgiven. Right. Very there's few. A, and then the whole group got kicked out of the restaurant, which super sucks. So, like, Dude smashes this plate and like, had there not been plexiglass there, good chance that I'm going to, to get some stitches because like a ceramic, oh whatever is just flew into the back of my neck. hundred percent, So like, 100%. We look back and we're like, and like, of course it felt terrible because we were there through a connect and like, they were looking for like, uh, we, we were giving the hookup anyway, but like when you're a restaurant owner or a manager and someone's coming to like, like, do chew, like yeah. chew a piece of content to like yeah. promote that you're like at the restaurant yeah. like, and they're giving you food for free, but like, it's an exchange, right? They yeah, want yeah, to yeah, like yeah. feel and look good because like, oh, like, please come back. And I could just tell that our staff was just like, fuck. And so the, <laughs> like the, the manager of the person that was like, like coming over, fantastic waiter, so by the sweet. way, yeah. comes over, she goes, I don't know about you, but it's been a long night. How about a couple of shots, huh? And I was like, <laughs> you. This is great. I like you. And I, you could, it just felt, this dude ruined at least a half dozen people that he was with like very evening. And then 100%. you had security and people who are on their hands and knees Picking looking for up glass. All the glass. Yeah, all so security guys had their big the flashlights off. Yeah, oh my God. What a dick. You know, what, like the small dick energy that just radiated from that scenario. The girls are crying. Everyone's trying to get the glass off them, picking it out of their hair. Like it was the most dramatic small dick energy mo moment that I've seen in a while. You know what I wish, and I don't wish this often, but you know how in Black Mirror, there's that uh, episode where they, they are able to rewind people's memories to like oh, show yeah. what actually happened. Yeah. I wish that if for any reason whatsoever that that technology ever actually comes to market, any girl he ever goes on a date with- <laughs> Can see that can live see that. footage go. And I hope his mother oh can God. too, because any mother who saw that would be devastated. Donna would slaughter you. Donna would have absolutely- Oh yeah, Donna would not. I, I genuinely think that if I called my mom I was like, mom, I need help burying the body. She'd be like, "We will talk about this after. I will figure it out." Like she's, she will help. She would be, she would, she would be looking for an excuse as to why I committed a murder. But if I smashed a plate on somebody's face, I think she would just be like, "No." I thought that I thought that you were trying to get Donna to cover for you because you had smashed a glass on someone and killed someone. But no, no Donna would abandon you on that. For yeah, sure. no, I yeah. genuinely think yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Donna would 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 figure out yeah. a way to justify just about anything yes. that I did in her head because I'm her son. Yes. That that behavior, nope. Unacceptable. You're out. No. Unacceptable. Donna does not approve of scenes in public. No one loves a scene in public. We were just talking about this the other day Ooh. where like, if Jeremy and I get into like any kind of spat when we're together and like with friends, like we will always push through the night and never fight in front of our friends. It's not, if we fight in front of our friends, it's because like we, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. I don't think we've actually yeah. ever fought in no, front of our friends. No, we've never fought in front of our friends. R ever. No. And like, we're not someone, fortunately, both of us, one of us will usually be in a good enough mood to be like, I, I feel like this, and then it builds a bridge and we're like, okay, got it. We're, or uh, you just handle it when you get home. Right. You Or you go home early. I just like, I'm so uncomfortable when people fight like that in public. I'm just not like a public scene type of person like and that. Also just like dudes exhibiting just such, 
childish sophomoric antics. Like, are you kidding? I can't do it. I mean, childish. You you picked up a plate and smashed it like you would like, your toys when you were a toddler. baby, Google, go, go. Right. I smash things. I smash things. Hulk like, smash. Let me show you how right I am by being an absolute idiot. Right. Like, do you feel good? Do you feel powerful, bro? You feel good about that? Moment of silence for his small penis. Moment of silence for his small penis. That's far too much silence. That was too much silence. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. We're already like, okay. So okay, highlights, highlights, highlights. I mean, so the, go oh, out, go out beer garden, kind of bro-y there at beer garden. Cause it was a place near NYU. We decided that it's a little too bro-y. We see almost another fight break up. This guy next to me was trying to pitch me on why um, it, I was dumb for not wanting to go get my MBA. And of course I think he was all 23 years old. And I want right. to say, sweetheart, little boy. Uh, you I'm have, doing just fine. You have, yeah. yeah. And also you have not yet lived outside of your degree program. So let's not judge me. Um, and then the person across from me was trying to pitch himself as a rapper and wanted to know if I had label connects. Um, another fight almost broke out because there was some kind of ping pong beef happening between the bros. We, oh, and if anyone's ever been to the beer garden, the standard has a beer garden and they have a ping pong table in the middle of it. And there's not enough room to retrieve balls. So no. it's just a giant social disaster. <laughs> social disaster. Didn't stay there long, went to another bar. That one was fine. Stay there until 3.30 again, almost died. Turn up. Um, I had like one creepy incident there where I was waiting outside of the bathroom. I didn't hear about this till or, later. You, yeah. you didn't tell me. I would have gone and just, you know, just, I would have smashed a plate on his face. <laughs> Obviously the rational thing to do in that scenario. See, the thing is like, and maybe it's my old, like my advanced age now. The thing that like comes to mind that I would do at this point is I would lean over real quick and just be like, I'm so sorry. You're flirting with my girlfriend. Could you stop? Because I think that would be way more embarrassing than me right. being aggressive. Right, 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 yeah, right. Like, hey, you probably didn't know this, but like you, you're being a little creepy to my girlfriend. Could you stop? Oh my God, yeah, like that? a guy hearing that he's creepy is probably such a yeah, blow to the like, ego. Hey, just one guy to guy. Let me just like real quick. You're me, being creepy. You're being a little creepy, creepy right now. Any other dude, there's two, either the dude's gonna go be enraged, like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. My bad. Or he's gonna go, go be creepy to someone else. Yeah. So I was waiting outside the bathroom for um, um, our friend and uh, I was just kind of sitting there and it was in front of like where both bathrooms would exit, like male and female. Right. And this disgusting old dude comes out and he was like, hey, sweetie, you waiting for me? And I was like, no, I'm fucking not waiting the for you. The balls on him? Yeah, literally the balls. Wow. And I was like, no, I was like, I'm not fucking waiting for you. And he was like, oh, okay. And just kept walking. And I was like, ew, I was like, why are people so fucking bold? I would have been like, yo, dude, this is not the line for the AARP, fuck off. Also. You could be my dad. Yeah. You could be my little dad. Yeah. Disgusting. Unless you're paying both of our bills, big guy. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. But you can't be daddy, bills, then you can be daddy. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. It, yeah. So what do we do? Oh, oh my God. We ha This has to be, like, we have to tell this story, the US Open story. So the we US Open- We almost made the biggest mistake of our lives. Well, so the whole point of what's going out there was US Open. Right. And I have, have never seen a, a game of competitive tennis played in my life. Outside I've, of on YouTube. Right, and have you? No. Despite us playing for the last year, like right. we're not like tennis aficionados right. or professionals right. or seasoned fans. Right. So we genuinely went from never seen tennis to the most iconic game and day of games ever. Right. I mean, like this, he didn't end up winning the whole thing, but like this was one of the most like highly anticipated games. Oh my God. And rounds well, of he was about to ever. win four out of four of like the um, like Grand, world the Grand Slam, Grand Slam yeah. thingies or whatever. See, look at how professional Sl we are. Slammy you know? thingies. Slammy thingies. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's what he calls them. <laughs> right, so, but we originally, so we were supposed to go to the US Open on Friday, that whole flight debacle, we weren't able to go. And so we were like, oh, fuck, like we're not gonna get to go, but like, let's still go to New York. We've got so many friends there. We'll just make a time out of it. We get last minute tickets to be able to go on the closing day, which is like, oh my God, it's incredible. And so they were like, do you wanna go see men's singles finals at 1 p.m. on Sunday? We're like, oh my God, yes, of course. Yes, we do. So I open up the US Open app and I'm like, oh, it's women's doubles finals at 1 p.m. I was like, oh, whatever, like we're just happy to go. Right. So we show up, we like probably leave their house around 11 because we're like, oh, traffic, it'll probably be crazy getting in. We get there, it's like so peaceful, so quiet get to wear seats, we have incredible seats, but like the stadium is empty. There's no one there. Nobody. No one. And like when they announce like, and here are the finalists from, you know, Australia and China and the folks from, you know, the yes. United States. And it was like, is this it? Is this the- This is it. This is it? Yeah. Because there was maybe a hundred people watching. In what it was a 5,000 person stadium, <laughs> bless you. 
a 24,000 person stadium. Okay, so it was a little bit off. Okay, yeah. got it. And there was maybe a hundred <laughs> people that weren't working, yes. watching the women's finals. It was, was like, insane. We were like, why is it so like, empty? And so we get into our seats and I'm like, man, let me just see what, what tickets would be if right. we were to stay for the finals. Right, because we men's realized, finals. We realized that the, men's, the men's match was at 4 p.m. Totally, and like, it, although it was fun watching women's doubles, it's just like, it would be fun to watch singles. It, and like, also everyone was talking about this match that was coming up. And also do just like to just stay. Yeah, yeah. and so I'm looking up, I was like, it was gonna be, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars to get tickets it was at that wild. time. It was yeah, crazy wild. expensive. And as we were sitting there, this guy came up and just sat right next to us. Uh -huh. And this dude ended up being such a, one, this dude and his friend had been going to the open for years and they were pros at just kind of just checking out different like seats to get better seats than whatever they had bought. Oh, absolutely To be able to move down yes. it. And they were so smooth with it. And like, after talking to this guy, I can totally get like, if someone walked up and like, hey, these are our seats, he would have been able to be like, oh, our bad, no worries. Hop up and find other ones, yep. no problem. Yep. He was the kind of guy that like somehow, although I'm thinking about it and he's like literally just gaming the system, he did it in such a way that I'm like likable. Oh, pass, totally. Oh my God. Loved him. It was great. Everything. It was great. And so in talking with this guy, we were sitting there complaining or even just vocalizing about how we wish that we were able to watch the men's finals, which were gonna be immediately after this round. And he was like, you could tell he was very confused. And he said, so you guys are leaving? Well, we wish we could stay. And he, as much as said, if you have tickets to these seats right now for the women's finals, you also have tickets to see the men's finals today. I'm like, so we don't have to leave? And he was like, no, you idiots. And so. <laughs> Had he not sat next to us. We, I, I'm not kidding you guys. Like we were we were packing up our shit to get an Uber home at maybe like, I don't know, 3.15. We were gonna like go grab a bite to eat and then get grab an Uber and head home. And had this guy who had literally, and he he was very transparent. Honestly, he's like, I was literally looking to sit next to people who looked cool because I obviously didn't have a ticket down here. So I wanted to make sure that like who I was sitting next to was gonna be fun and just like, I could like join their group. And he picked us, which is really nice. Which is really nice. But if he hadn't done that, we would Our have just gone home. Our dumb asses would have thrown away $6,000 a seat tickets to go home and do fucking nothing important. And we would have missed like the most iconic tennis match of like all time. Oh, and I've never and felt so dumb. Shout Jokovic, I know you're a big fan of the pod. Right, and, and so Medvedev. Medvedev, so, you know, hi big Serbia, fan. hi Russia. Right. I don't know if we have any people that listen from Serbia and Russia. If I'm you, sure we do. Okay, Serbia and Russia, comment yeah. below. Yeah, for sure. Is Serbia touching Russia? Is it close to it? No idea. Geography, ge geographically challenged. I have no idea. Okay, well, Russia, Serbia, we want to hear you in the comments. Right. Um, and it ended up being the best time ever. So it also so ended good. up being a really fucking long day. And then it made more sense why people didn't roll into the stadium until around three, which is really, really sad for the women's doubles finals because like how fucking rude to totally. not show up. Cause Coco star. Star, absolute star. I mean, the average age of the winners on the female side this last year We're was like, like 19. 18, 17, yeah. 19, it's ins Like insanity. what are you doing here, 19? <laughs> Don't incriminate yourself. Statue of limitations. Yeah. Is. yeah, it's just like, it's just incredible to see it all kind of together. But also, oh, but the most impressive thing that we didn't end up getting to catch before women's doubles finals, mm -hmm. they had a, a completely separate like set of rules, but were all but the same for tennis champions who were paraplegics. Oh my God. We watched a lot of it on like the big screen outside of the stadium. It was yes. fucking un. Real. If you have two working legs and have ever complained that you did not get to a ball. Shut the fuck shut up. up. Shut and, up, and literally shut up. Us included. Yeah, shut up. We looked up when we walked into this one immaculate, around Arthur Ashe where they play yes. in Billie Jean Stadium. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> we looked up on the, the screen and it was like, oh my gosh, Art, is that two people playing tennis and they're both in wheelchairs? Oh my God. Better than we could ever play? Oh my God. And remember I said, I was like, wow, that's incredible they can do that. And the, the, the response from someone who knew it was, well, they get an extra bounce. I was like, an extra bounce, they could get an extra five bounce. That is insanity that it they was, can like play yeah. tennis. Oh my God. You know, I mean, I mean, just it shows you just how like y you are are just just trained to think about oh how hard something is. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody out there who's doing it literally with no legs and still crushing it. Crushing, absolutely crushing. It's oh my God, it's amazing it's, it's incredible. to see. It's and incredible. it reminds me of, and we didn't talk about this in the podcast and I'm so mad at us and so upset for us to not remember to talk about this. We were at the Grove in a Nike store maybe a month ago. Oh my God. It was right for your birthday. Yeah. Oh my God. We were at the Grove, which is a beautiful Nike store. We were walked in, we like we walked in, we looked to the left, and there was a massive mural, correct? Mm -hmm. 
of a No, 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 no. So it was it was okay, so there was there was two parts of this. One, there was um um a bunch of uh mannequins yep. that were wearing the Nike clothing. And one of the mannequins was in a wheelchair. Yep. And we're like, oh my God, it's incredible. Like I love like the, that was like the representation. And you just you're not used to seeing it. Yeah, like brands it, don't right? do it. They don't do it. And so like, it was so incredible. And so this girl rolled in in her wheelchair and she was like, oh my God, like mom, look. And mm, no, well, no, wait, wait, wait. And so she rolled in kind of at the same time as us and was like, oh my God, mom, look how cute that is. So like, right. she pointed to it and they were like, oh my God, love it. She went and took a picture in front of it. And we're like, oh my God, like this is the fucking, like this is why people Very do cute. it. Like this yeah. is why like- Oh, but you're right. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. <laughs> and we're like, this is why corporations need to do this because like, look at this moment. And so we got to like witness this moment. And it was so incredible. We were checking out at the same time as them. And there was like this big reel playing on their like massive, like 15 foot mm -hmm. TV screen. And it was her, the actual athlete that was like checking at the same time as us in the wheelchair that was in all of the commercials. So it was actually her mannequin that was modeled after her wearing clothes that she was modeling in the commercial in the mannequin. And she was in the store and it was a little celebrity moment. And I was so excited for her. I, my tears literally were like welling up in my eyes. Bam. Bam. So cute. So cute. Like. Any one part of that would have been cute, but just but seeing all it all come it together, together. Oh my God. And it just reminds me over and over and over again. It's like, you know, there are some corporations who at X month throughout the year, they'll do something. Right. And then they're the ones that are like starting to realize, or what about the, I don't know, always on strategy for that. Could be good. Uh, would be good. Should be good. Should be good. Will be good. Put more money into it. <laughs> no, it was just like really cool oh to see. Oh my God, it was so cute. It's really cool to see. Um, and then fast forward through the rest of the trip, I would say the only other highlight is that we went to a few like um, bougie stores and everyone was big pretentious assholes there. And yeah, um, yeah, that was that was pretty much it. And then we went home, had a great flight home, totally seamless flight situation. And, um, uh, and then I slept 10 hours last night. And uh, today, the very next day, after we're back from New York, got an email this morning accepted to do a big old speaking gig back in New York. Yeah, you're on your own for that one. Yeah, so I'll be in New York top of November. Love that for you. I know. Bubbies and I will be sleeping in bed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah, when one of us travels, Bubbies gets to sleep in the bed and it's all very nice. I have like a few speaking things lined up for the rest of the fall. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna be on a plane at least every three or four weeks for the next six months. Hate that for me. Let me hit that for you. You're coming to half of them. <laughs> I know. Lauren gets so cute and needy when I'm like, I have to be actually planned. She's like, when, when are you go? What are you going? What are you doing? Can I come? Can I? When it's like, do you want to come to this? She's like, yeah. no. No. I was like, so you want to come then? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so if and when you see Lauren in random places that you don't expect her to be, Texas, uh, where's Florida? Uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll you've see. you've spoken wonders about both of those states lately. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Literally the two states that I've like most recently sh absolutely shit on. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, deservingly though. So I'm not gonna take it back whatsoever. I get it, um, I get it, I do. So <sighs> it's gonna be good. And like, you know, knock on wood once again, the trip went great. Oh, and we saw Bachava. Oh yeah, we went for dinner with Bachava and Ben on our last night, which was so nice, we had ben. such a great time, yeah. We thoroughly went through just all the reasons why we would never move to New York because yes. it is way too expensive. Yes. And we are way, yes. we're just too big of people. We literally didn't have room to put like two toothbrushes on our on our bathroom counter in the hotel. And by the end of it, I was like, I don't know where anything is. I have no space for like my six skincare steps and a toothbrush and like anything. I'm, I was doing my makeup with an iPhone light to my face because there weren't any windows. Like I was just like, I need to go home. I'm claustrophobic and I need to go home. I need my moose and I need my square footage in my backyard. We're so soft. I'm just not built for it. I'm not built for the city. But would you do a live Wild to Nine podcast in another city if the opportunity presented itself? yeah, what do you mean? That's a completely different situation. <laughs> All right, well, if you're booking a live things, then you know who to call. You know who to call. I am very excited to, to do the next few weeks of the pod. Also blankets, go get a blanket. The blanket, the link will be below. Mm -hmm. um, comment likes, if, you, if you're not liked and subscribed and saving and sharing all the pod things, shame. That was really aggressive. Shame. You know what I was thinking about the other day? I was like, if everyone who enjoyed the podcast sent the pod to one person, to like one friend, like that would just be so nice. Can we do that? I mean, I, I mean, I, we can't do that because we share the pod with all the people that we like. But if everyone who listens to the pod shares their favorite episode with one person. Okay, now from now on, if you don't share the podcast with at least one or two people, you get kicked off 
The Tilly list. <laughs> the Tilly list. We'll know. Yeah, we'll know. <laughs> I, I will brainstorm ways to figure out how to find a way to make that exciting. Right, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll think Actually, about it. Actually, I really am toying around with, with starting a Discord. Oh, me too. Really? Yeah. For the pod? Yeah. Okay, we might start a Discord. Might, okay. Maybe. Okay. Potentially. Maybe. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>